I would like to thank the organizers for giving me a chance to give this talk here. So uh, the topic of my talk is ring closure in semi-flexible polymers. So this is a semi-flexible polymer. So what the topic is about ring closure. So in the past two decades, there has been much interest in the theoretical study of semi-flexible polymer elasticity. These studies are motivated by micromanipulation experiments on biopolymers. In particular, in recent years, there have been experiments involving stretching DNA molecules, which give us information about the bend elastic properties of DNA. So here we focus on a particular aspect of elasticity of semi-flexible biopolymers, uh, looping. Looping plays a crucial role, for instance, in gene regulation. Distant parts of a DNA uh, need to come together and form a loop for certain gene regulation process, processes to get initiated. So more recently, there have been fluorescence experiments on cyclization of actin filaments, where they analyze the formation of rings in actin polymers and study the effect of ring closure on bend angle fluctuations in these poly polymeric rings. Our interest here is in the process of cyclization itself. Actin cyclization is of interest to biologists who do visualization studies of actin ring formation in the context of cell division. To keep the an analysis simple and also to focus on the essential physics of cyclization, we restrict to polymers with only bend degrees of freedom and no twist degree of freedom. So this work I had done with Shebanti Chattopadhyay, who was a VSP student, and it's published in Physics Letters A, uh, 2017. So our starting point is the pure bend worm-like chain model. Uh, in this model, the polymer configuration is viewed as a space curve. So it's like a space curve. And the energy of configuration is given by this expression. Uh, where T stands for the polymer, uh, polymer configuration, L is the contour length, and A, which is proportional to the persistence length, persistence length being the length scale over which uh, the polymer is essentially straight, um, uh, and the curvature kappa uh, measures the rate of, rate of change of the tangent direction with the arc length. So the key quantity of interest is, is the end-to-end -end distance distribution, which has this, uh, this form. Notice the appearance of the delta function here, which uh, picks out polymer configurations with end-to-end -end distance equal to r. And the appearance of the Boltzmann factor, where uh, you see the configurational energy coming in. So the, within the pure bend worm like chain model, we compute the ring closure probability by considering this Q tilde of R, which, which I mentioned in the last slide, uh, for R equal to zero, essentially. And uh, here is a plot of Q sub zero versus beta, which is the scaled contour length. And um, the thing to notice here is that the ring closure probability gets suppressed for both the rigid end and the flexible end. And it peaks around the intermediate range of rigidity, for which uh, beta is approximately around 3. So this would correspond to a configuration of something like this, where you can think of each of the edges being uh, like the persistence length. And this is indeed quantitatively matches with DNA uh, experiments with fluorophores and quenches. And uh, this, is a, this is the intermediate range of flexibility that gets picked up is a sign of an optimal competition between energetic and entropic effects. And uh, I just want to look back a little bit. Uh, in 2002, uh, we had a paper where we had noticed a curious double humped feature of the end-to-end -end distance distribution vector for uh, the, precisely this intermediate range of rigidity. And this has been also corroborated by uh, simulation results from 
uh, Abhishek Thar and Devashi Chaudhary simulation. So this competition between entropic and energetic effects do play a very interesting role. Now to get back to the paper that uh, I started with in physics letters A, we had also computed another experimentally relevant quantity. One of the experimentally relevant quantities of interest is the mean squared tangent angle fluctuations. So we compute the mean squared tangent angle fluctuation for a three-dimensional ring, which looks like this. And a similar calculation for a linear filament in three dimensions. And both have a linear dependence on this scaled contour length, beta. But uh, the coefficients are different, as you would expect. And if you plot the mean square uh, bend angle fluctuation against beta, you get these two curves. The dotted one corresponds to the ring-like structure. And you see that uh, for the ring-like structure, bend angle fluctuations is suppressed compared to the linear filament. And this is indeed something which can be verified by future fluorescence experiments in actin filaments. So to conclude, we have analyzed the ring closure probability of semi-flexible polymers within the pure bend worm-like chain model. Uh, it would be interesting to see how our predictions quantitatively compare with future cyclization probability data for actin filaments. We also expect our predictions for the mean squared tangent angle fluctuation to be tested against future experiments <coughs> on fluorescently tagged ring-like and linear actin filaments in a three-dimensional geometry. Thank you. So any questions? We have a lot of time, almost five minutes for question. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, uh, if you look at the, uh, uh, if you ask like, what does the polymer look like when it closes, like condition around the fact that it closes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there like some uh, study on that? Like, yeah. I mean, do, uh, are they more like uh, round or is it like elongated? Yeah, well, uh, for instance, that this thing that I was saying, because the peak, peak is happening around roughly, uh, basically, L over LP, around 3. So this thing, strictly speaking, would be true for a freely jointed chain, right? because there is a, yeah. So this will be like an equilateral triangle. They, they haven't done visualization. That, that would be a, something very interesting to see what, uh, what the shape is in detail. Questions? So does the bend angle fluctuation uh, grows with the uh, chain length if you keep the LP fixed? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, if you look at this. Uh, and linear chain means open chain. Linear so, chain means open filament. Yeah, okay. correct. And in fact, this kind of things they had done in a two-dimensional geometry. They had actually done some experiments, and uh, there also there is a linear chain. Uh, for three dimensions, the um, Coefficient is different. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else wants to have uh, any clear any doubts, comments, anything? Actually, one comment I would like to make is that it's uh, in a, in a way connected to to those talk because um, uh, if you map the persistence link to persistence time, there is there are some similarities which come up in some of these. Uh, there's a sort of mapping between semi-flexible polymer uh, statics of semi-flexible polymers and the dynamics of active particles. Uh, so if there are no more questions, let us thank the speaker again. <laughs>